Hello guys, this is Chris Bailey, the owner of Battle Beaver Customs here. Today we have a PS5 DualSense controller. Um, if you're watching our other videos, you'll notice that this already has our Z-Sticks installed in it. I'm um, wanting to make a quick video showcasing how to install what we call our D-Buttons. So if you don't know what a D-Button is, if you didn't use them on PlayStation 4, it is a project I came up with a long time ago with Sonic Fox. Um, it's also used pretty heavily by a lot of other fighting game players like Maximilian Dude. It simply takes the solid one-piece D-pad and breaks it out into four individual buttons. The big benefit here is, and this controller will have the same problem that the DualShock 4 had, is if you were holding back to block in a fighting game and you were to rotate your thumb down, you may get an accidental input on this controller it's still exactly the same. So we want to break this up into four different buttons so that way when you're pressing back you're and making contact with this part of the d-pad you are only pressing the back button. So we're gonna go through a quick way to break this thing open. So first thing I like to do start with the controller face down. Um, here in the back we have this trim piece we need to remove it from the controller first so we can get to our screws. The best way to do this since you have to pry it out is you don't want to pry in any of these edges that you're going to be looking down on when you're playing in case you were to mar the seam a little bit. You don't want to ugly up your controller. So you go from the back um, and go right here in this corner. I'm using a curved pair of tweezers. These things are a little abused. They've been hit by a grinder and some sanding drums, but they work for me. Uh, tools of the trade, I guess. So we're going to just tuck right in under here. You can probably do this even with a butter knife if you had to and just get under that we do sell some plastic pry bars on our website they'd probably work too and go from both sides pull up right around here you don't want to bend it too far because it is still thin plastic that'll pop up I'm going to come over the thumbsticks and then pull back you'll notice these two little teeth stick into the faceplate so we have the trim piece off, which I think if you're into customizing things, this is going to be a very popular piece to pop on and off to really change the look of your controller without having mm -hmm. to void any warranties. So to get to, that allows us to access two screws that are here in the back. To get to the other two, we need to remove our bumpers. To do that, you want to get down in the corner with something to pry, and you can just pop your bumper straight out. Or if you don't want to bend against the faceplate, the other option would be pull down on the trigger, come from the bottom, and come up. Mm. And then you'll see in here we have two more screws. So I'm going to go ahead and re re remove these four screws. And this, once we take these four screws off, is going to allow us to drop the rear shell. Taking the rear shell off this controller will expose all the ribbon cables and other interior screws that hold everything mm. together. You'll notice these screws are all black. They're all about the same length. Fortunately, it is not like a smartphone or a tablet where there's 26 different screws, 10 different sizes. It's pretty consistent when it comes to this. So pry up a little bit on these corners and you'll notice if you're pulling on the corner, you get kind of a hard stop. And that is because right here we have two clips so you can just lightly pry under it and you'll see it disengage get those two and then you want to push up that direction yours may not fly off that easy you'll just slightly pull forward and then you get to this part you'll bend in this direction and then pull out and that gets off the rear shell so we'll put that off to the side for now once to this point we need to remove the battery and you'll notice so we'll pop this battery, you pull it, grab the wires as close to the connector as possible to prevent any damage to that connector. Pull your battery out, and you'll get your battery tray. Remove one screw here, and this will allow you to remove your battery tray. But right here we have a small microphone that's been added to the DualSense controller. So pull that microphone sideways, and you can firmly pull straight up to remove it from the controller. Get your battery tray out, and we are to 
the main board. So you'll notice on the main board, we have a lot more flex boards going on here. So we'll start with the sides. Each one of these controls this trigger mechanism. Um, and we'll dive in a lot deeper if you're just interested to know what's going on in this controller, what you can mess with, um, and what we kind of expect to see. We're, we'll be doing a longer video going through the components of the controller. So these are your two trigger ribbons. We have another front facing microphone ribbon. You can pull out, if you can't get it out, you can use tweezers or some needle nose pliers, which we're actually gonna use for this blue one, which is for the touchpad. Pull straight up on those. We don't wanna damage these gold contacts at all. So try to bend these back a little bit. So now your main board would be free. So if you notice this mid plate is stuck to the face plate. We actually have two screws in the corner. We're just gonna pop our mid plate. So push on your thumbsticks. So you see I have just back here, just push up to get your board up. And then you can actually tilt it backwards if your rumbles are connected. And we're gonna take out these four screws. Your black screws will be very easy. Remember your short black screws are attached to the black part of the mid plate. You have two silver screws attached to this white part of the mid plate. And your silver screws are actually just a little bit longer than the black screws. So you probably wanna get them backwards. Um, if you were to put a longer screw into a shallow hole, you could actually wind up damaging your face plate or having some discoloration, uh, things won't fit right. So just remember where you take those, those are the only two screws in this controller that we'll be working with today that are a different size than the rest. All right, so we got those out. So now we can just kind of tuck our faceplate forward and you can grab this by the rumble motor because it is big and you can just hold on to the whole mid plate. So this whole thing will just move freely. Um, you can put the whole mid plate off to the side. And now we have our faceplate. So you'll notice our faceplate here. We have our face buttons, touch pad, and the D-pad area. So you'll pull this contact pad off and you'll pull this out. So what you will notice First off, we have on our website, when you order our D-buttons, we have the ability to offer you a rubber contact pad. Um, and surprisingly, this is actually a very good feature for the DualSense 5. And this is very hard to show on a camera, but this rubber contact pad is a lot more flexible. It's a lot, it's probably a little bit thinner. Um, there's actually some gram force input differences when they make these contact pads. I don't know the specific numbers, but this one is clearly a lighter input than what we sell. So ours may feel a little bit crisper, but will require a little bit more pressure. So if you want a more sensitive one, you want to probably stick with your stock one. If you like a little bit more crisp, um, you need to give them a little more force inputs. You're going to use our replacement rubber contact pad. So keep that in mind. One thing you will need to do when we're installing these, the rubber, the D buttons, you have your four buttons here and this little dome piece. So if you take your mid plate with the main board, flip it over. The very first thing we want to do is take this little dome piece and you can use tweezers. I use an X-Acto knife. On the back, there's a piece of 3M adhesive tape you want to just peel the little piece of paper off of it, exposing the 3M adhesive. And these are removable, it's not a permanent adhesive. And you wanna stick this right in the very middle of where those D-pad buttons go. So the reason we have this is when they press down, um, when they go down too far, part of this button will actually contact that dome, allowing it to tilt. Gives a little bit more natural feeling. So it's optional. You may or may not even notice if it's in there, but we do recommend having that installed. So we'll take your faceplate, install the D buttons. They can only fit in one direction. So you wanna make sure they are all the way down. Um, sometimes they like to twist up out of the hole. Don't let that happen. We're gonna put our replacement rubber contact pad in there. I personally like a stiffer button press so get that in there, make sure it tucks around this corner where it gets a little close to that the touchpad mounting area. So 
press in, make sure it's all the way flat. So that's in there. Then you will take your main board and mid plate. And the one ribbon you need to watch out for is this blue one up here. It's going to feed through this hole. So make sure we, boom, get that through the hole. And once that's in place, take your board using uh, my fingers on the thumbsticks on the back. Right, that way you have control of the board. You want to line it up where it's flat. Make sure all your ribbons are all the way. See this, this trigger ribbon, mm -hmm. it's kind of stuck up in here. Um, lightly get it up out of the way. Make sure your microphone ribbon here at the bottom is out of the way. So these things have a like, curl to them. Uh, they're going to want to flop back in. There you go. And get that halfway down. Check your wires for your rumbles. If you wanted to remove your rumbles, now's a great time to do it. You can clip those wires, rumbles pop right out. It would lighten your controller considerably. If you don't play with it ever, probably a good thing just to take it out. So here we have our ribbon cables. Start up here at the top of the touchpad ribbon and make sure you line it up, push it straight in. We'll go down to the front facing microphone, press that one in and we'll do each of these triggers Hold on to the hardened plastic portion that is adhered to the thin flexible ribbon. You don't want to damage your triggers. Since this controller is fairly new, it kind of goes out saying, but there are no replacement parts for this. So if you have any hesitation on this, um, contact us. We can offer a mail-in service to install these for you, or you can buy a controller with just D buttons installed, or maybe a few customizations along the way. Um, but just want to show you how it's done. So take the battery tray, slide this in, and get the screw that holds the battery tray and the mid plate in place. Oh, you know what? We all make mistakes. So we just got to back up. We forgot to put two of our screws back in. We're going to take a little bit of a shortcut. And All right, so lesson learned. Don't forget to put screws back in. Your controller work without putting these two screws in since there are four um, having only the two outside ones it would still function just fine but i want to make sure we have everything in place in the video all right These ribbons back in again. There you go. So you mess up at home, you can know that it's just part of being human. This is the launch day of the controller, so this is only my second time opening it. So excuse me for that. Get these outside two controllers or outside two screws in. Your battery clip. And we have this rear facing microphone. Get it in here. And you'll see that it tucks into that corner and presses down. Battery can only go one position. Clip it in. The wire route's under that clip there. And that gets mm -hmm. that in place. So we're going to put our rear shell back on. You're going to start with these top two parts that hook over the triggers. And go up over the mid plate and then lightly. Bring it down. Once it's there, squeeze everything together. Check your sides. Check your bottom. Make sure everything is clipped in, especially those two clips here at the bottom. Then you'll just go in and put these two screws in. Oh, 
We sell screwdrivers and pry bars on our website as well to help with these installations. Um, the screwdriver we sell, a plastic and a, an aluminum version. Both of them are very good, not only for controller work, but if you ever have to take apart Christmas toys and install batteries, they're very multi-purposed. All right, and just pop your R1 and L1 in. You just get them in, make sure they move freely. And take your trim piece. You want to push this down into the holes. So these two little fangs will go into the controller. You'll pull it down and you'll feel it kind of give a little bit. Push it in, line it up, press down here in the middle down around the sides and at the bottom. And there you have it. Those are our Battle Beaver D buttons installed. So now when you hit your inputs, these are all independent. So now when you're holding down back, you're only getting back. You're not gonna get any accidental inputs. So there you have it. We have other videos that showcase how to install things from uh, thumbsticks and different accessories. If you like to keep controller safe, we also have cases tables, anything you can imagine. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, contact our support team, like and subscribe this video to see more of this type of content. Thank you, have a great day.